Verse 26. Fear them not, therefore. Do what? Fear them not, therefore. Right. For there is nothing come that shall not be revealed. Uh -huh. And hid that shall not be known. Christ tells us again, like we just read other scriptures, be strong, he tells us right here, fear them not. There ain't nothing to be scared of, especially if you represent your God. Because they ain't coming with no scripture. They ain't coming with feelings. Right? Fear them not, therefore. Come on, bro. When I tell you in darkness, uh -huh. that speak ye in light. Speak ye in the light. There ain't no secrets with salvation. Like the, like the go-ride masons. They keep secrets. All right, come on, Hebrew. And what ye heard in the air, that preach ye upon, upon the house. Uh -huh. And fear, fear not that which kill the body. Now why? So why is Christ steady, steady warning us not to fear that they can kill the body? Somebody that mad that you spit that scripture, they got thoughts of killing you. Mm -hmm. right? yeah, yeah. Um, why, why is he, he trip off the mindset? Why is he warning us? He steady warning us, don't be scared. Right. Don't be scared because you're going to see something that's going to shake you. Huh? You're going to have your faith wavering. Don't be scared. Fear not. No matter how they talk. All right, come on, Hebrew. And fear not them which kill the body, uh. but are not able to kill the soul. Uh. But rather, fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. And that's the most high. You fear the most high, not no man. Uh, not no man that sin like you and put his pants on like you. That's right. All right, come on, Hebrew. Or not two sparrows sold for a farthing. Sparrows are birds, farthing is something like a penny, like the lowest, the lowest uh, currency in the age. Farthing. So are not two birds sold for a penny? Come on. And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. Uh -huh. But the very herds of your head are all numbered. Uh -huh. Fear ye not, therefore. There we go again. Don't be scared. All right, come on. Ye are more value than many birds. You are more value than many birds. The most I look after the birds. Huh? He got you, but it takes you to believe it. Right. Either this is just ink on paper, good reading, you know, exactly. gets rid of my anxiety, exactly. or you believe what you read. Right. You have the faith to believe this is what it is. And this shouldn't be no problem because we see a lot of this in our families today. But he spoke this 2,000 years ago. Come on, Verse 32. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before me, mm -hmm. him will I confess before also before my Father, which is in heaven. Mm -hmm. But whosoever shall deny me before me, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Those that deny the Christ before men will be denied before the Father in heaven. Oh. Right, so there ain't no uh, you uh, ashamed. You in the earth speak the word. You been staring at your poets. You in the wrong thing. You signed up for the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Most I had you on a mission daily. You probably over here speak the script and over there. And, uh, come on now. Yeah. Be serious what we talking about. Come on, Hebrew. Yeah. Think not that I have come to send peace on earth. Is that Jesus? <laughs> what did he say? Is that Jesus? Is that Jesus? Is that the Lord talking? Yeah. That is the Lord talking. What do you say? Matthew 10, verse 34. Uh -huh. Think not that I have come to send peace on earth. Uh -huh. I came not to send peace, but a sword. But a sword. The sword rightly divides. It cuts. Sunday. Right? We read earlier what a sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. That's right. Right, ladies? You know, look, I'm not here to hold hands and march and tell you we shall overcome. Not at all. I'm here to bring the sword. Either you're you with me or against me. Either you're on the right side or you're over there. Spirit of truth. Exactly. Spirit of truth. Gathering or you scattered. My friend from the Yahoo school, she went to the Yahoo school, she said, uh, God is peace and love. I took yeah. that script. I said, yeah. that's peace. Yeah. But I'm saying that he, he is the prince of peace. Believe yeah. it. But through, through war, he going to put down all the lapses. Right? Right. There won't be no more opposition to the right. war when he gets done. What she said. So right. guess what it's going to be? Peace. Peace is the say? truth, too. Uh, right. Well, well, you tell us that people. script, what she said. She just got to start stumbling. Yeah, but see, understand? Right. She, she's under the curriculum, so she's not talking. Yeah. Right. So, you know, when you bring out certain scriptures, uh, some people are so proud to where they can't admit, you know what, I got the truth off that. Right. 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 So she went to theology school, they don't even want to go got a degree, right. Right. got a degree. So it's like, who is this? You can't tell me nothing about the Bible. You don't see this on the wall, right? I'm a theologian. Uh, 
nothing wrong with you. Right? And when you bring them to the script and then they don't got no response, they get to reach you. Oh, God, right. it's peace of Don't do that. You don't got to open up the book. Now, let me say this too, sis. Now, what you're saying, you can separate yourself from your mother and different things because you don't live in the same household. But you got couples that are married and one coming to the truth and the other has not come in yet. You can't walk away. There's a war inside of the house. So you can't just deal with that and say, this side wants to bring the tree in, and this side is on the word of God. You got some problems in the house. You ain't got to go. They in the same household. And the main thing may be, they're looking at, well, hell, you was a, you was a Muslim two weeks ago. Now you an Israelite. So I'm not giving up what I believe in you flip-flopping all the time. So now we got issues with that. So when, when you think about things, you got to think about everybody along this line, everybody along this walk. Before you make a statement, you got to include everybody in every situation that this may be unfolding because when you said, said Paul deals with that. If you dealing with or you got a boyfriend or girlfriend that ain't all the way down with this, you have to leave them too. If that's your walk away from your parents, you have to leave who you with if they are unbelieving. In the same like manner, there's no partiality. We have to understand this. But the most high say, if you on your game. They will come in. And, and that's what Paul spoke about in 1 Corinthians 7. We're going to just hit a little bit of that. Yeah, we're going to hit it. Let's finish this off. Here. Verse 35. Down to uh, like 39 or something. Yeah. For I have come to set a man at variance oh. against his father. You who all know what a variance is? Anybody? A different. A different. At odds. At odds. Christ said, Christ said, I'm here to put a variance between. Father and son. Either you're going to roll with me or you're going to roll with that. That's what Christ so That's what it's about. Right. All right, come on, Hebrew. And the daughter against her mother. Mm, right. And the daughter in law against her mother in law. Mm. And a man's foe shall be they of his own household. Hear that? Your enemy is going to be they of your own household. Mm -hmm. Your own people. They did to Christ like that. His own household didn't believe in him. Not everybody. Else. All right, your enemies will be there of your own household if you profess in the Christ of this Bible. So take that into consideration when you're going in trying to witness. Know what it is. All right, these things are already written down to happen, and now we've seen them happen. Sometimes we get overwhelmed instead of standing strong, steadfast, and unmovable. Right. Keep banging. Right. All right. I just want to say, always remember that, like the mercy that the Most High has on us, that we must have on our own people, because we want to. We're not in this knowledge, right? We know what it's done for us since we've been in it. But we have to remember, we didn't know this once in our lives. We weren't raised with this once in our lives. And we must still have that same mercy and love on them. That to be harmless as a, a dove, wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove, is, is to see how you can pick your battles to slip something not deceptively in. But like I was saying earlier, by you being the example of staying steadfast in what you believe no. is to show them that I, I really believe this. I'm, I'm really rolling with this. I'm really down with this. I ain't playing you know, That's right. when I first came to the truth, my biggest thing for me was to try to tell the whole world who we was. Mm -hmm. Our people. They didn't want to hear that. Our people. But I kept getting pounded and pounded and pounded and pounded. Until and, and Brother Dad used to always tell me that's not the way you can't run rush in right at it like that and hit them. <clears throat> give them the word first. And as you're giving them the word, they know the word or they learn the word, they hear the word, they know what you quote and it's the scripture. Then you move from there. But you got to feed it to them and let them at their own time. Time and chance happens to every man. I just read that this morning in Ecclesiastes. So it might not be their time. Right. And not to mention. But keep praying for them. Very. Keep praying for them. The fact or state of being in disagreement. <coughs> Woo. Mm -hmm. Hear that? I'm come to set a man at variance, father against son. So they don't disagree. Disagree. Uh -huh. About this Christ and this Bible right here. Not in harmony or agreement. Mm. Fair. See, you got to go there not to harm, but to be in harmony. This has to be harmony with this word or it's a problem. 
if you're looking at them or you're saying you're doing this wrong, but you give a pass on this side, we can't play games like this, y'all. And a lot of us do it because if you love sports, every one of your sports icon is dressed up like Santa Claus, and you still rooting and hollering for him on that day because he didn't got a triple double. Hey, no. You know, you mad at your parents, but this your best, best. I know LeBron James. What do you do with that hat on? I overlooked that Santa Claus hat. Right. Because I, I got money on the line on this game. You gotta, it got to be even across the board. Across the board. It must be even across the board, y'all. Oh, yeah, verse 37. Verse 37. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. You can't love your father or mother more than the most high his son. <coughs> Flat out, come on. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Uh -huh. And he that taketh not his cross and mm -hmm. followed after me is not worthy of me. That cross represents persecution. persecution. Right. All right, eventually he died on that. Right, so he's like, look, if you ain't willing to take up this cross and follow, follow in the line behind me to get uh, crucified, stay at home. We ain't talking about putting over. Stay at home. Look, this whole thing has always been persecution. Right. They've always talked bad and ran the prophets of the Lord under the book. Right. Always. Always. They ain't never loved the message they Never. Right? So why would it be any different with you if we had the end of this stuff? We had the end of it. Come on, Hebrew. In verse 39. He that findeth his life shall lose it. He that findeth it. I'm already saved, sanctified, and filled. What? He that findeth his life shall what? Lose, lose it. Uh huh. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. Hear that? I'm the complete opposite of what they teach you. Right, exactly. Right? For Christ said, you know, look, if you die for me, die doing this work, not in your own corner of uh, madness. Mm -hmm. You feel me? But being persecuted and you need to give your life for this. You're going to gain. That's right. That's what that's about. Right? So they're going to talk back. That's right. They're going to keep talking. I want to hit this John 7 real quick too, y'all. Why they did Christ. They talked bad about him. John 7, 1 through 7. And 1 in Corinthians. And then you right. this Corinthians 7. Yeah. John chapter 7. Yeah, we got a few more minutes left, y'all. Then we'll be out of here. We're going to hit these last two scripts, y'all. Hey, man. What did you know? Right. What's up? Just tell me you finished it. All right, yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah, we, yeah, we can. Y'all finish that Romans 4, too. We about to get, get to identifying right. every all the way. Sometimes it go like that. It go left field right. and we got to bring it back for a Y'all just read that Romans 4 to the end. If we was in 19, they go down to 25. Talk about yeah. Abraham didn't stack in faith. He believed it all the way to the end. And say things we still talking about. Right. All right, where we at? Uh, John chapter 7, verses 1 through 7. This, Everybody there? This is the Christ. This is his family stripping with him. Likewise. Hey, you're not above your master. If they did him like that, it'll happen to you too. Right, but be steadfast and unmovable. Your God is real, but you can't be uh, going to battle, wavering, praying, wavering. If you're not sure, pray to the Most High and ask Him to understand. Right, in the name of His Son, and be sincere in what you're asking for. He knows if you just want you some understanding, the Lord over the flock, peace the flock, get you some quick money. Know if you want some understanding, so you can truly feed His people. Right, take yourself up out of it. But he'll give it to you. It's his wisdom. But he got to know that you faithful. You a faithful student. You shalom in one year. And then, man, bro, I said shalom by five years. Right. No, he left here. He went and saw uh, Miss Cleo. He ain't seen him since. Mm. Right? But most I looking down the line, no, we won't serve you. We ain't going to serve That's right. So you got to endure this thing to the end. They're going to talk later for them talking. Talking about the son of the most high like that. And what he said about the most high said that uh, he know who's serving and gonna serve him. When I was reading this morning, he said that he know that those were righteous that would be righteous that was in the womb. Mm -hmm. So before you even had any thought of yourself, he knew what you was gonna do for him. You know, the way you was gonna grow up and the way you was gonna be. You know, he said it, it looked, that's for us to look back and think all the way back to the womb. Right. He knew what you was gonna do. Womb. He knew who that we told Jeremiah that. Right. Before you was even in the womb, I knew you. 
Mm -hmm. Right? And I ordained you a prophet to the nation. Mm -hmm. That's just what it is. So he know who it, what it's going to be. We, we all got decisions to make. That's right. right? You're going to go with Jews' life or you're going to choose death. That's right. Choose well, just stay over there. You got to choose. But the most I already know the end from the beginning. Right. That's something to consider. When you out here uh, going left field, most I already knew what it was going to be. Yeah. All right. We got something. John? John 7. John chapter 7, verse 1. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry, because the Jews sought to kill him. And people were trying to kill him. Everybody didn't love Jesus the Christ. People were trying to kill him. Right. All right, come on. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacle was at hand. What's going on, brother? Explain to them what you mean by walking in Jewry. Jewry is Jewry. He's walking in Jewry. Amongst his people. Judea amongst his people. Right, you got you got in Jerusalem, you got Israel, and you got several other different things that divide Israel up. You got Jerusalem, or what some call the land of Judah, or in the time of Christ they called it Judea. My baby girl, man. Judea. Uh -huh. Or jewelry is the same thing. So he was walking in a different part of Israel called Galilee instead of in Jerusalem. All right, come on, Israel. Uh, verse 2. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. What feast? The, the feast, feast of tabernacles. We still keep that today, but in honor of Christ. That's right. right? If you read this whole chapter, y'all going to have to read it. The, uh, the, the, the Pharisees that was keeping this feast as well, but they had murder on their mind. Right? So they intentions, like I tell you in 1 Corinthians 11, you can't drink this cup and eat this bread unworthy. You'll bring damnation on yourself. So likewise, when we keep it the feast, make sure you don't got no ill off towards your brethren and sisters. Right? Where it's, where it's all about your mindset at these feasts now. They was keeping the feast. Oh, they all good. No, because they was trying to kill the son of the most high. He still went up and kept the feast, but he knew they was trying to kill him. Why? Because he was a threat to the established order. Right? Come on, people. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence, and go into Judea. That, that, that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. See, that Judea is Jewry. His brother tell him, look, go on up into Judea. You over here in Galilee, go on up there and show yourself. Go to Judea. All right, come on. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret, mm. and he himself seeketh to be known openly. Mm. If thou doest these things, show thyself to the world. That's his brothers, to that. Jesus' brothers telling him, look, man, if you who you say you is, go show everybody. Right. Like we would do. Huh? But see, Christ was humble. He wasn't just riding around looking for something, God, they get down. Right. Huh? Riding around the flies, cherry, he walked everywhere. Right. He wasn't born in the palace, he was born in the Suko booth, man. Right. Mm -hmm. So everything about him was meek, even though he could have boasted and did his thing. Mm -hmm. You feel me? But he wasn't boasting. That wasn't what he was about. He was meek about it. They like, why you all humble? Why you ain't just went up there and slapped her and took the crown? Right, right. Why you ain't do that? Everything he did was so you could choose by free will. Yeah, he could have done anything to make you say, hey, that's him. Right. I'm going to worship him. Right. That wouldn't have been the worship that he wanted. So they, they wasn't with Christ humble and meek the uh, way he carried himself. Right. He wasn't boasting. A lot of times he was healing people, telling people, look, don't even tell. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just go to the priest and offer what Moses commanded as a healer. Don't right. tell nobody. Right. And yeah. you know, Nick bro, was going to tell yeah. everybody anyway. Yeah. Well, he was just trying to be cool. You feel me? Laid low. We really wasn't boasting with him. Come on, Nick bro. Verse 5. For neither did his brethren believe in him. You hear that? His brothers didn't even believe in him. That's Jesus the Christ. So you know in their conversation, they try to soup him up. Yeah, they souping him up. They like, man, go on up there and show yourself, dog. What happened? <laughs> I mean, you think you saying that's what it is? Why you ain't went up there and showed out the Pharisees, the high priest and everything? Right. Yeah, that's what I thought. They scared. Yeah, yeah. Like our people do. Because they're rebellious. So if they talk bad to the Messiah like that, understand you what you got coming. That's right. Verse 6. Then Jesus said unto them, my time is not yet come. Christ was always in order and on time. That's My right. time ain't here yet. That's right. All right, come on. But your time is always ready. It's always easy for you. It's always good for you to go amongst these people. Mm -hmm. My time ain't ready right now. It's always good for you, though. Right? He's going to tell you the next verse. Come on. The world cannot hate you. Right? But me, it hated. Uh. Because I testify of it. That the works thereof are evil. You hear that? Christ was testifying that the works of the world were evil. He wasn't holding hands with the Romans and jumping the rope. 
Mm-hmm. Trying to go vote and you hear me? He was testifying against the works of the world, so the world hated him for that. Like understand the mindset, the mind frame. Like today, they push the spirit of coexist. Everybody just get along. Right. March and say, we shall overcome. That was what Christ was doing. Oh, it came with a straight message. Repent, the kingdom of heaven. That ain't right. Turn from your wickedness. Get down and lay down. That's what we're talking about. And you got the decision to make. All right? And, the, that? and the great second witness to that is that John chapter 15, verses 18 and 19. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. If you was of the world, the, lo- the world would love you. Right. The world loved his own. If you still was on your old worship doing the same thing that you was brought up doing, it wouldn't be no problem. As soon as you start professing this Bible, reading this Bible, so I don't say something totally different. Now it's a problem. There's a natural variance. Spirits, I, spirits are in a war with each other. A continuation. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hated you. That was uh, John chapter 15, verses 18 and 19. Read this last verse. Chapter 8, I mean verse 8. Yeah. Yeah. The Messiah is still talking here. He says, Go ye up unto the feast. I go not up yet unto this feast. For my time is not yet full come. That's the, he would tell them that's why he, they told them to go to the feast. Right. He tells them I ain't going. I ain't going. My time is not yet. And then if you keep reading, he eventually went on up. Now see, everything about him was law. He kept the law. He kept the feast. He just didn't go up when they went up. Right. He threw his little hoodie on and, and and there. Right. Right. And went on up there. Right. Got he got their beckoning. Right. What you doing? All right, let's get that. First Corinthians 4, you got it down? Yeah, First Corinthians 4, 11 on down. First Corinthians 4, y'all, we're going to get these last two and y'all, we're going to close out. Some more understanding on what these brothers was going through. But you're going to get it thrown at you. That's right. What do you got to tell us? When you come to serve the Lord, prepare your heart for temptation. Uh-huh. So if you ain't done that first, ain't no need you go on the wall. Stay on your porch. Know that as soon as you profess Christ, Satan's in the legion on, a legion of demons at you. It won't be of your household. First Corinthians 4, verse 1. Verse 11. Verse 11. First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 11. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger uh-huh. and thirst uh-huh. and are naked. You hear that? It's Paul talking. His letter to the Corinthians. Right to this present hour, we hunger, we naked, what else? We thirst uh-huh. and are buffeted mm. and have no certain dwelling place. And have no certain dwelling place. Yeah, Brothers didn't right. have no established house to go to every night. Right. Brothers moving around, setting up camps and bodies of believers, selling off to another part of the world, setting up some more believers. Always was on the move. He lets you know we thirst, meaning he wasn't you know, drinking like you drink today. <coughs> We hungered, meaning he didn't have four, six full course meals every day. Said he was naked, meaning he just owned the clothes on his back. He didn't have a roll of decks of clothes to go pick from. Huh? And still did the work. He was buffeted, persecuted, but still kept it going. Right? So those are not excuses to fall off because the pitfalls of a society come against you. So what? Keep it going. Alright? Come on, Hebrew. And labor. Working with our own hands. No, no, fleece the flock. Mm. And working with our own no, hands. Collecting tithe money. Working with money. our own hands. You hear that? brothers were working with their own hands. Paul wasn't pimping nobody. Only money they collected, they collected it to send back to Jerusalem for the poor. That's it. They was working with their own hands. All right, come on. Being reviled, we bless. You hear that? They reviled and they joning on you. They cussing at you. What you do in return? Mm. We bless. Nigga, hell what you do, dog? No. Right. You say bless. Right. And then the most happy with you too. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, 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 that cut them even more. Nigga, lay up with what you talking about. Yeah, what else? The words just roll right past. Being revived, we blessed. We followers of Christ, right? That's right. They were reviling him. The scripture say he didn't open his mouth. That's right. Mm-hmm. Right? And he opened his mouth back at him. This was, hey, this is what it is. This is what it say. So what else? And, they, and they, they was cutting him. Smacking him. That's right. What we do? 
Huh? We cuss back hard. Or do we take this example right here? Take the example. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not they what they know do. What they, do. they don't know what they're doing, y'all. These are the most rebellious, hard-haired people in existence. Us. Cool. Us. Yo people. Right? So that take a real man of the Lord, even though he down and getting spit on, like most of them forgive them. They don't even know what they doing. Stephen said the same thing in Acts chapter 7. Right. He said, Lord, lay this not to their charge. They just stoned them. Right. Don't even lay it to their charge. They don't even know. That would Christ mean by turning up the cheek. People gonna do personal things to you in this walk. What you gonna do? Load up and get back at them. I thought we was men of the Lord. Right. We're not supposed to be striving. We're supposed to be after the teach. If they kill you for doing righteousness, that's a plus for you. You went to the kingdom. What you fighting for? That's right. What you fighting for? Oh, dog, she was saying this to me, dog. I cussed up in effing my friend. Oh yeah? Oh yeah? yeah. Huh? So I mean, no doubt sometimes it calls for you to wax bold and check the situation. Right. Or let somebody know, look, it's a free country. You want to listen, keep moving. Right. And keep it going. Don't don't allow that lust of, you know, that flesh of yours to be like, oh, I should have cussed them clean right. out. Right. Check everybody. Right. Right. You got to check your old war going instead of them. You got to check, I say. Call the old war going. That's it. These brothers were being reviled and they was blessed. All right, come on, Hebrew. Being persecuted, we suffer it. We suffer persecution. We don't complain about it. We suffer it, right? We get through it. Yeah, yeah, Big Mama Jonah again says, y'all with no righteous men down there. Uh, talking about y'all keeping the Passover. Boy, that's old covenant. Right. Huh? Yeah, all right, how she doing, though? Right. She just got the house. Right. Okay, but, still right. praying for it, though. But James said in chapter 1, count it all joy right. when going to divers to the taste. Right out. Right. Come on, let's get it. Being defamed, we entreat. Uh-huh, come on. We are made as filth of the world. We are made as the filth of the world. What's following Christ? See that? You made as the filth of the world, lower than what's at the bottom of your shoe. Come on. And are the outscoring of all things unto this day. Everybody talking bad about us. All right, come on. I write not these things to shame you, uh -huh. but as my beloved sons, I warn you. I feel that? I warn you. I'm letting you know this is what you're up against out here. Right? Not to shame you like, oh, no, I don't want to get down. If that's what you have to go do, I'm cool. Be like, no, I'm writing these things to encourage you, let you know, warn you what's out here. All right, giving you a heads up. Come on, Ebro. For though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. Right, one father. Come on. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Mm. Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. Mm. For this cause I have sent unto you <coughs> Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. Right out, same doctrine everywhere we set up. All right, come on. Now some of you are puffed up, as though I would not come to you. Some people that, you know, Paul come through, break them off. Some brothers get certain knowledge and say, you know what, later for what you're talking about. Right. Knowledge puffeth up, scripture tell them. Right? So he's like, some of you are puffed up, like I won't show up. Like you don't know right. I get down out yeah. Right? Like you don't know I travel everywhere instead of caps. Right. Right. All right, come on. But I will come to you short. I'll be there short. Mm -hmm. Right? Come on. If the Lord will. Uh huh. And will know not the speech of them which are puffed up, uh -huh. but the power. Really, I ain't late of all that talking. Right. Uh, I will show back up. So Paul, Paul kind of let them know, like, look, I'll show up and check some of them. I got to. Right. But do I need to do that? Feel me? Like we sons of light here. Right. Followers of Christ. He also Come on. Say, he also say don't get it twisted. Right. Don't get it twisted, though. Y'all know my record. Right. Right. Remember, I was kicking those and killing y'all. You know what it is. Right. All right. Come on. Come on. Well, the kingdom of God is not in word, uh -huh. but in power. The kingdom of the Lord is in power. So when he talks well. Huh? Some people, you know, I voted for Barack Obama because he just speaks so well. But the kingdom of the Lord is in power. It ain't in work. All right, come on. What will ye? Uh -huh. Shall I come unto you with a rod? Shall we come with weapons? <laughs> Show up, you know, like we're trying to get caught. Shall we? Come on. Oh, in love. Oh, in love. I need to bring and in the spirit of me. And notice that's a question mark. That's a question. That's for them to respond. 
How should I show up? Right, right. Oh, see, so I need to bring that thing. Or what? <laughs> 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 this First Corinthians seven is also concerning this day, y'all, because if you if you got married, come into this walk, or you with somebody that don't believe totally, there's answers for that as well. Because this is a this is a rough time of the year for that situation when you got two people living in the same household, warring. Right. You just can't pack it up and leave and leave all responsibilities because of one day. If you've been worn like this, you've been worn all year and you ain't left. 1 Corinthians 7 and 14. 14. And let you know if the spouse be pleased to stay. Right. If they want to stay here. They can stay. But if they want to leave, they can leave. <coughs> 12, 12, 12, 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 12. But to the rest speak, I, not the Lord. So Paul telling you right here about dealing with an unbeliever. He's saying you, I'm speaking. So he's telling you right here at this point. If you want to stick with the commandment of not being unequally yoked, don't do it. But Paul telling you, look, this is me. If you believe I'm a servant of the Lord, then I'm speaking on this matter. He's he speaking as a man. As a man. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, mm. and she be pleased to dwell with him, That's right. let him not put her away. Uh -oh. I speak as a man. All right. All right. And the woman which hath a husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. Right. Mm -hmm. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. And the unbelieving wife is sanctifi sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now they are whole. If the unbelieving depart, let him depart. Let him go. Let him go. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases. 